So this project is really quite simple. What you're going to need is some scrap fabrics of solid colors that are all the colors that the Olympic rings have. And that's going to be black, red, blue, green, and then also yellow. So what we're using for the body of it, you can see how the ring is going to be. It's nice and sturdy. And the body of it is actually a Pelon product. It's called Peltex. It's the 72F one because it's double-sided fusible, meaning the fusible adhesive stuff is on one side and then also on the other. Okay, and that's going to allow us to fuse the fabric to both sides of our circles. So what I've done is I have a little 4-inch circular template here, which is what I used. But you can use a CD, a, a bowl, a saucer. You can make this in any size that you want. So just get something that's round. I laid it on top of my Peltex. I traced around it. And then with a pair of scissors, I just cut them out. So you're going to be cutting out five circles in total. Then for the fabric, you just need scraps of fabric. You're going to need two pieces to cover both the front and the back of the different colors. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done these other four, but I want to show you how I do it with the yellow one here. So we're just going to put our template piece inside, layer it between the two fabrics, take it to your pressing surface, and because this product has fusible adhesive on both sides, it's going to fuse both pieces of the fabric to it. What I like to do to help it along is actually spritz it with a little water and that's going to create steam now when I hit it with a hot iron. And if you're interested in this little travel iron, because a lot of people write me and ask me about it, I'll include a link in the description box below so you can see what it is and where you can get one. But these really come in handy. I'm going to turn it over, spritz it again with a little water on the back to make sure I'm fusing the other side as well. You're going to take a pair of scissors and you're going to cut around it. And depending on how dark or light your fabric is, you can really see where the edge is. On the black, it was a little bit darker, so all you have to do is just take your time and feel up against the edge of that Pelon piece in, that's in the center and just cut around it. Okay, and there's the base for our Olympic ring. Next thing we need to do is, as you can see here, is cut out the center part. And to do that, I just took a piece of just like a cardboard thing and I laid it on top of my circle and I tried to figure out leaving about one inch on the outside, okay? Because you don't want the center circle to be too small. It needs to look a little bit more like a ring. So I put this one in the center here. You can just create this out of any paper that you have. And then you're going to lay it in the center and trace around it. And this is going to be your guide for when you're sewing, you know where to sew at. And remember, this is just a kid's craft project. It doesn't have to be super perfect or exact. It's still going to turn out fine for you. So after you have all your pieces cut out and traced out, the next step is to take thread in the coordinating color of the fabric you used and you're going to zigzag stitch all the way around, first of all, the outer edge, okay? So on this one, I used red thread, went around it. And so let me take one of these over to the sewing machine so I can show you how to stitch that down. So I have my blue thread in my machine. Next thing is to select your zigzag stitch. We're going to start somewhere on the edge and what we want is as the machine zigzags, we want the zag part of it to land, meaning the needle. As I'm stitching, I want the needle when it comes this way to land right off the edge. And what that's going to do is conceal the entire edge around our circle. So you can see, and notice what I'm doing. I'm really only working with one hand and I'm just slightly turning it as I stitch. And you can see where the needle comes down, you see right off the edge there. Then it comes back in and grabs the fabric, and when it comes back out, it's right on the edge. When you come around to the end, go ahead and restitch over your first initial stitches, and you can even back stitch if you want, just to make sure everything is secure. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch the same thing that I just did around in a circle, but along the line that I traced on the interior. Okay, I'm going to cut it after I do it. I think it's just a little bit easier for me at least to do it that way. We're going to line up so that, remember how we lined up the needle going on the edge of our fabric here? We're going to line up now the needle going on the line that we did because that's going to be our outermost edge because we need to trim this away in the center. So I'm going to start on this side and notice how I'm starting. The bulk of the fabric of the circle is to my right so that I can come around this way. And just line it up so that when the needle comes down, it's landing at least clo as close as you can get it to that line. So right there, it hit the line, it goes to the outside, comes back in, hits the line, and continue to do that all the way around. And again, restitch and backstitch over those first initial stitches when you make your way around. 
So that's done. So now go ahead and do that by changing the threads and continue to do it for each of these. Then we'll go back and trim them. Okay, so I have my circles already stitched down with the appropriate thread colors. Now you need to grab a very sharp and strong pair of scissors. I'm using these little clippers here that I use for rag quilting. And what you're gonna do is fold your circle in half and start snipping in the center. You're gonna go up to that innermost stitch line without going to the stitches and cutting into them, okay? Just stay a little bit away from there and then you're gonna make your way around it. And there you can see I've cut out the interior of that ring. So continue to do that to all your pieces, to all your rings. So once they're all done, they're gonna look like this. All you need to do is snip into the two bottom ones, okay? And then you can interlock them with the rest. So I'm just gonna cut it anywhere here. of the Olympic rings, you can put it next to your child and have them figure out the little puzzle of how these actually go. So it's really fun for them to play with. I hope that you'll consider giving this project a try. And remember to check out the other Olympic related videos from my other team members on Team We Should Hang Out Sometime. I'll include the end grid right here so you can click on their faces and head on over to their channels to see what Olympic and London related videos they've been working on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.